Welcome back to AM Prime. Uh, I say welcome back because it seems as though the work never ends. Hello there and welcome to the program on WESN, a content capital. I'm Keaton Shaw. Thank you very much uh, for joining me. And I suppose it's fitting to say welcome back uh, as this conversation I'm about to have uh, is a continuation of a series of discussions uh, in respect to the tourism sector uh, in Trinidad and Tobago. Uh, it has been suggested that the sector has seen uh, actually quite remarkable recovery since the COVID-19 pandemic. The tourism sector is booming uh, and uh, we are seeing more and more visitors to the shores of Trinidad and Tobago. Uh, there's no way uh, to actually have an idea in relation to the spend uh, that TNT receives uh, from such visitors uh, and really what we gain financially uh, from visitors throughout the course of the year. But uh, we can have conversations with stakeholders uh, for them to share their thoughts and opinions, their experiences in respect to the, the tourism sector in TNT. Uh, and this morning, I am joined by uh, one such stakeholder, uh, the president of the Trinidad and Tobago Incoming Tour Operators Association, Ms. Lorraine Boucher. Good morning, Ms. Boucher, and welcome to the program. Good morning, good morning, Mr. Have you, have you, uh, are you all hearing me? We can hear you clearly. Okay, great. Good morning, Mr. Shah. How are you? I'm doing well. How are you doing? Well, a little under the weather, but I'm all right. Well, you sound very, very strong. I'm sorry to say that you're under the weather, but I appreciate you joining us for the conversation this morning. Um, in that respect, uh, uh, from all that we've heard, it suggests remarkable recovery for the tourism sector uh, and that uh, the at least the short to medium term outlook seems very positive. Does uh, these statements that we've seen from the Minister of Finance and even uh, from uh, the Minister of Tourism, Rano Mitchell, do they align with what stakeholders in the sector are experiencing? No, they do not. Um, I think that both of them seem to be in an alternate reality uh, and they, they really have not had any consultations with the stakeholders who are actually the practitioners and delivery and the people who deliver the product of tourism in Trinidad and Tobago. So I really do not know where they're getting those facts and those figures from. Because yes, um, we were doing pretty well before COVID and then when COVID hit, a lot of smaller um, organizations or firms who are involved in the tourism industry fell by the wayside and were actually struggling to keep alive and to, to, to keep the product moving. But with that said, um, there was really no effective um, institutional support for the tourism sector, particularly the tour operators, the tour guides, the tourist transport people, the suppliers of the goods and services. There was really no significant assistance for those of us in that sector. And as a matter of fact, I'll be quite frank with you, I'm yet to meet the Minister of Tourism and he's been there for I don't know how many years. Um, I have been the president for as long as he has been the Minister of Tourism, and we have not been able to meet with the Ministry of Tourism or the Minister to discuss any of the factors or any of the things that we see that are affecting the tourism sector in a way that is not positive for Trinidad and Tobago. Does, does that suggest a disconnect then between the Total disconnect. And, and the sector? Is there a relationship though between Visit Trinidad and the Association, for example? There is a very small relationship between the Tourism Trinidad Limited and the various associations. They call us when they need uh, um, something or when they want to share some information or when they yeah, or when they need, for example, product offerings so that they can advertise on their sites. But to really say that we are part of the decision making and how we should be moving forward and what we think the visitors would like to see or to witness, that does not happen. And uh, I don't know if you re realize, but our sites and attractions are in a total mess. We don't have any standards. We don't have any certification that takes place that people can show a badge to a visitor to say, okay, I am certified and I am okay, you can travel with me. We have a lot of issues that we would like to deal with. Um, but unfortunately, since we are not at the table, that's a little difficult to do. In respect to uh, the current challenges, you just to give an example of, of, you know, there is no sort of certification. Uh, uh, but beyond that, what are some of the other uh, challenges right now that need priority, that need focusing 
at this point? Okay, so the first thing I think that needs focus is that there needs to be consultation and collaboration with stakeholders. We have the president of STEART, we are the president of the Tourist Transport, you have me, you have several stakeholders, several associations that would love to be at the table to bring our ideas, which could be very innovative and very creative, to be able to push the ante forward. However, we have some challenges that is beyond the tourism sector. The main one I'll tell you is really crime. Crime is a challenge. Now, we think, oh, that's not really a challenge. Oh, yes, it is. Because every time we press share on a Facebook page, is the entire world is seeing what is happening in Trinidad and Tobago. And if you look at some of the advisories that have come out from, say, the United States and the UK and so on, they're really telling people, in other words, don't really travel to Trinidad right now. You understand? Now, that does not mean that we don't have the product. We have a fantastic product. We have the best product, I think, in the entire Caribbean. Because when you can find one thing in Dominica, one thing in Barbados, one thing somewhere else in Trinidad, you find everything together. We have, we have beaches in Tobago, you have wildlife, you have eco, you have cultural, you have all of those two things. But unfortunately, when you have joined a ministry of culture with a ministry of tourism, and it's culture, arts, and tourism, it seems that the tourism has fallen off the banner because the focus is for tourism on carnival. Carnival is not a tourism product. Carnival is a cultural product that we can use to bring tourists to Trinidad because most of the participants in carnival are really the people who are from the diaspora, who are away and who come back home for the little taste of Trini. But really and truly, if you are looking at the statistics, which we find it very difficult to find, but we can, we can talk among ourselves and understand what is happening. New visitors coming into Trinidad for carnival, we're not really seeing that. We're seeing a lot of returning visitors. We're seeing people who are from the diaspora who live abroad. But to say that this as an event is attracting new people, we're not really seeing that. And it's extremely difficult to actually get the... Um, to actually get the facts and the figures. I want to give you an interesting figure, and I think you all should do some research on this yourselves. The cruise ship industry, which we're touting to be so good. When I looked last year at how many cruise arrivals we had in Trinidad versus, and I used St. Lucia as, a, as a, a comparison. Last year, St. Lucia had over 400 calls in the same time that Trinidad had about 75 calls, okay? I don't know if you understand what the dynamics. Some of those big ships carry 4,000 people, etc. Now, this year, I understand that Trinidad only has between 20, around 15 to 20 calls. What is, re what is causing that significant drop? Has there been any investigation and understanding? Is it because our product offerings are not up to standard of the other islands? Is there a monopoly in the cruise ship industry in Trinidad so that the, people are not, the ships are not privy to all the various offerings, uh, our rates too high. What is happening that we have dropped so significantly in the amount of cruise ships that arrive here? And those cruise ships do, as I'm not a proponent for cruise ship, for the cruise ship industry, because I think it's just a like, hit you and they're gone. But a lot of people benefit from that because you have the artisans, you have the people who provide the transport, the sites, the attractions, the tour guides, you have people who benefit from that as a downstream, and that creates economy and economic movement. You also have the fact that when tourists come here, they pay U.S. dollars, and we are struggling for U.S. dollars in this country. Why is it that we are not looking at the low-hanging fruit and make sure that tourism actually is viable and that there's business coming into this country? Um, one of the things I want to say is that if you look at the budget figures for tourism this year, similar to last year and the year before, what happens is the money is allocated for recurrent expenses, the staff in TTL, the staff in the ministry, etc., and for the boards, the various boards who fall under that ministry. But when you look at institutional development, when you look at marketing and promoting the destination outside of Trinidad and Tobago, very little is allocated for that. You know, you've described our product. Uh, uh, and the product that exists and there seems to be a total breakdown in even maintaining the product that we are offering um, though you describe that we have so much more to offer at least in your opinion as compared to the rest of the Caribbean so if the product itself we have not fully developed what about the marketing of the product that already exists are we doing enough is our marketing strategy that that is being employed on the part of Visit Trinidad 
uh, as well as the, the Ministry of Tourism, is it sufficient, is it enough to penetrate existing markets and even new markets? Well, you see, without a plan, you will reach nowhere. We don't know what is the plan of the ministry. We don't know what is the plan of the TTL. They do not share that with us. We have no idea. We just see things coming out sporadically. You must have a vision of where you want to place Trinidad and Tobago. So if, for example, we know that last year we had 10,000 visitors, and this year we want 15,000 visitors, what are we doing to create the pull factor for those extra 5,000 people to come to Trinidad? We don't. All we are doing is just advertising some tours. We are advertising a trend that is so great. But we're not really doing anything to actually call somebody to say, hey, oh gosh, Trinidad songs and Tobago songs great. I'd like to go there. We're not doing any pull factor marketing or advertising. And I was speaking to somebody who works with the CTO. And they said that uh, it is very strange. They hardly see people at the various um, tourism uh, events um to promote the destination they hardly see senior representation there and really and truly there's not much talk about trinidad and tobago being a, a tourism destination you have of course saint lucia who's way ahead of us barbados is doing well and you have a couple of the others who are doing pretty well because for them that's important they don't have the fallback as we constantly saying of gas and oil which should be it seems to be in trouble and the the second highest um earner of foreign exchange is tourism but we don't seem to understand that and you spoke about the minister of tourism but there is there really a ministry of tourism because to me there's a ministry of culture and the arts tourism is not being considered as something that is really important look for example the problems we have with the yachting associate with the yachties the yachties come down here every time we have hurricane season but it is a nightmare for them to get through immigration and over the period of time, they had started to migrate to places like Grenada and so on. And it's only when the hurricane was down in the area recently that we saw this influx that came here. But the type of service that they got was poor. And these are the things that we have to, because you have immigration from the airlines, but you also have immigration in the sea. And you need to make sure that your process to get people in, we don't want to just open it up to everybody, though the borders seem to be as open and as free as anything else. But you need to make sure that when people legitimately want to come into Trinidad and Tobago, that there's an ease of coming in. And that is not there. So there are many, many factors that we have to look at. It's not, it's not just saying, hey, come to Trinidad, it'd be great. We have to look at how do we actually motivate and attract people to come to this destination. And when they are here, how do we keep them safe? And how do we provide a service that is of international standards? that you can get on a road that is not a river to reach a site and attraction. That when you reach that site and attraction, it's clean, there are bathrooms and there are people to serve you. That if you go to Maracas Beach, you have lifeguards that can take care of you if there's a problem. And these are the kind of things that we really need to look at. It, because you have to look at the whole picture. You can't just say, oh, we poise for tourism, bring them. No, what, how do we deliver that product? And are there people, stakeholders, who are on the ground, who understand what the people need? When I am getting inquiries for a group to come to Trinidad and they are asking me to cost in an armed security for the duration of their stay, that sense, that is a red flag. Wow, does that happen often? Well, it has happened with my company at least three times in the last year. And I know a couple of the other members of the association have actually lost groups because they are very concerned about the safety of their people when they come here. So they are moving towards um, Barbados, they're moving towards St. Lucia, they're moving towards Grenada. At a the time, they, we used to promote and push them towards Tobago. But with the increase in crime in Tobago, from one or two people per year to 26 going on 30 per year, that is also another deterrent. No, it, I, I'm not disregarding what you have said this morning, what you've put forward. It's similar to, it's to a, a recent conversation I had with another tourism stakeholder. But uh, recently, TNT was named by Lone Planet as one of the top 10 uh, nations to visit in the world. So surely we are doing something correct if we have such a recommendation that, that uh, tourists should visit TNT in 2025. I am smiling because... 
tongue in cheek, I would like to say to you that these types of things are easy to be bought. <laughs> Go on. You understand? Because yes. I would like to know what is the empirical data that they base that on. Because if we who are if we who are practitioners here cannot get the data to help us to understand what is happening from the powers that be, where do they get the data from? How do they know that this is the emerging destination when we have but you know yourself when you look at it all these things that are happening in Trinidad? Who who is really going to come here unless there's a serious pull factor? I don't know what that pull factor is and I don't know how that award was given because to me, it seems kind of facetious, and it seems that I wonder if something passed under the table for us to get that award. That we are we are supposed to be the emerging destination. You yourself, if you drive around the capital of Port of Spain, is that what you want cruise ship visitors to see, or anybody in the Hyatt who decides that they want to take a walk into Port of Spain? As a matter of fact, they'll probably be told, "Do not go walking into Port of Spain unless you have somebody with you." And how can you say that you're promoting an, an industry that requires a certain freedom of movement of your visitors and the people who want to participate in tourism, but yet you cannot even secure your local people who are living here? Well, that's actually an interesting point. Uh, uh, but uh, moving forward with the conversation, in, in, in that sense, you know, in your opinion and from your experience, what would a successful tourism strategy entail for trans Tobago. What, what what is required for a successful tourism strategy okay understand something eh? first and foremost people who are involved in tourism in the private sector really are doing it because they love it they love the whole industry they love their country is it a lucrative oh. industry would you say it's a lucrative industry to be in what's that sorry would you describe it as being a lucrative industry to be a part of not right now it's not not for the small and medium enterprise is not a lucrative industry, but it can be a lucrative industry. It used to be a lucrative industry. People earn the living off of this. But right now, it's a struggle because you have many people who are owed VAT refunds. You have many people who have done jobs in tourism for the government and are still waiting to be paid. I had a particular operator who had to wait a year and a half to get a check for $150,000 for work that they did. That should not be when you are a small enterprise and you are just trying to stay afloat. So there has to be, to, to move this tourism industry forward, we need to have collaboration and consultation with private sector providers of the, of the, of the product. The government cannot sit down and the, te the technocrats decide this is going to be the best thing for tourism. They are not practitioners. They do not know. Okay? And they are playing around with whatever money is available to them. To, to try to help the situation. But that cannot happen unless you speak to the stakeholders. You must have us at the table to, and that's the first thing I'm saying. And I will I will harp on that and I will beat that, I'll beat that drum because you must have consultation with the people who are on the ground providing and who are getting all the inquiries from abroad. If you do not have these people at the table with you, to give you some innovative and creative ideas and help you to move forward the destination to move forward in tourism we are shooting ourselves in the foot we're not going to get anywhere because we have technocrats who think they know what tourism requires but they really don't know the most important thing that tourism requires is for you to, to showcase the destination as a safe place number one where the service is top of the line number two and where the people who are providing the product are certified and there are standards international standards that exist i don't know if you can say that we have any of those things the thing is you know throughout the course of this interview you've spoken uh, extensively as well as, as per the series and, and the series that exist uh and to my recollection following the closure of the Fernand Tobago Hospitality and Tourism Institute, uh, which allowed for the training of, of individuals really for the tourism sector. Uh, we haven't really had an institution that has adopted or, or, or taken over the responsibilities of the Tourism and Hospitality Institute. Are we losing out in respect to, to significant human resourcing when it comes to the uh, hospitality and tourism industry? because of this closure? 
Yes, we are. And um, there's a long, long story behind that whole closure. But basically, um, just before it was closed, there was work being done to make the TTHCI the hub of training for the Caribbean for tourism providers. I don't know if you know about that. And then what up? It was closed because um, government stopped the gate and all the various issues that were happening. As usual, it was a sort of a, it was a problem with finances and I think also a problem with political affiliations. So that we had that issue there, but we, there has not really been anything that has risen up. There's something in Tobago um, that does training and there's a private organization here that does some training, but really and truly we don't really have the capacity and the ability that we had when TTHCI was here to train people. And I'll tell you something, um, if you cannot train your people, here it means that they're going abroad and when they go abroad they stay abroad so we are actually there's a brain drain and we are losing people who are very good in the tourism sector as service providers and also to get to your point about why things may not be happening as they should if you do not have a methodology for standards and for certification then you have a lot of people who may be providing the service who are not qualified to okay who are not qualified to and who are not certified to legally or otherwise. In other words, for example, if a cruise ship arrives here, yes, you have the, the, the agent who will do the prepackaged tours so they know exactly what they're doing, the buses come and you go and so on. But you have quite a significant amount of people who walk off the ship who want to go on their own tour. And any tout who may be by the gate at the cruise ship complex can woo these people and take them on a tour. They have no certification they have not studied it they have not they don't have the knowledge and the information to provide it's not just driving them from point a to point b it's sharing the history and showing who we are to these people and if you do not have a badge that you can show where okay i'm legally certified and if anything happens to me i'll have a recourse and you're just taking the chance to jump into a car what are we saying for ourselves and this is why i said if we can't protect our own people how are we going to protect the visitors who are coming here? Which and, and, and it, I may mean, sound like I'm beating a drum here, but yes, because the most important thing when somebody is looking at a destination is that I'm going to be able to get there safely, have a good time, and leave safely. If that is not something, I don't know what you do when you are traveling, but most people who, when they're traveling, that is what they think about. Yes, they want to have a great time, they want to be immersed into the culture and the activities of the destination, but they also want to know that they can get back home safely. You know, in a previous conversation with another stakeholder, one of the points I would raise is that there is no unified body uh, or one unified body that is representative of all stakeholders in the tourism industry. Do you think that is something that should be the first step that, that stakeholders probably need to get together to create their own representative body that uh, we, we are hearing from stakeholders, but one united voice might be stronger uh, in respect to dealing with all these challenges that the tourism sector is facing. Okay, so one thing, um, the two points I want to make, I hope I'll remember the second point by the time I get it, but two points. We had the Trinidad Hotel Restaurants and Tourism Association, the THRTA, which is no longer operational. That got into trouble before COVID. Um, of course, through COVID, and now it, it does no longer exists. My association was a member. My company was a member of that association. And you, you hear what I say? Trinidad Hotels, Restaurant, and Tourism Association. So every and anybody could have been part of that association. So even though we had a tour operators association, there were many of us who were still members of that particular association because we felt it was impossible. It was important for the synergies without that existing then you don't have a one body that would take into consideration all the various associations but yes you do have associations who are still operational for example ours the Trinidad Tobago Incoming to Operators Association it was not easy to stay alive but we did it okay because we were determined that there must be at least one one association left standing after all this drama has gone through but the public sector the government does not see the importance of having sector associations that are viable that are operational 
that brings value to them, that brings statistics to them, that brings information to them, that can collaborate with them. Until that happens, we are not going to go anywhere. Government is the policy makers. The private sector are the providers of the product. The two have to meet. There's no doubt about it because you in your ivory tower can say, okay, I'm going to give $100,000 to tourism for this. But does tourism need that? And if you're giving it, can the people who need to access that money access the money or is the real tape so much that that money rolls over into the next budget, which is what has been happening? Ms. Pushy, I want to thank you very much for joining us on the program this morning. This is where we're going to have to uh, pause on the conversation uh, due to time. But thank you very much for sharing your thoughts and experiences with us. Uh, and really, uh, uh, the tourism sector plays a vice role in our economy. The Minister of Finance has indicated really it's, it's going to be one of the main organs going forward for our economy. I hope that it gets the uh, tender loving care that is necessary at this time. Thank you very well, much. I will always live in hope and thank you very much for having me on. Anytime in the future, give us a call. No problem. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you very much. Take care and, and please feel better very soon. All the best. Thank you very much. I will. Have a positive attitude. <laughs> yes. yes. Thank you. <laughs> well, you know, ladies and gentlemen, I think the first step to, to any challenge that you face is having a positive attitude. Uh, and you might think that that sounds very silly, but really, many a times, um, that's that's what we need to adopt, a positive attitude. So stakeholders are concerned. Stakeholders are frustrated within the tourism sector, but they haven't given up. That's why stakeholders still exist, and that's why there are these conversations. For the fact that the tourism sector has played and is going to play a very important role in the economic outlook of Trinidad and Tobago. Stakeholders have recognized that, and they are pushing so that all these challenges that they have faced and are facing are addressed. We look forward to future conversations with stakeholders in the tourism sector as the AM Prime focuses on this particular industry going forward. For now, let's take a break here on the program and we will return shortly. Stay with us. <laughs>